Hey folks, it's Craig and I'm feeling a little better. I can't take my temperature since I don't currently have a body, but I think my fever broke. One or two more good sneezes and my little excursion through time should come to an end. Ah! Oh wow, this isn't my history at all. It's the mysterious man, and he's on Earth. Honestly, that cannot be good. I'm gonna have to look into that when I get back, but for now, enjoy this full episode of Offices and Bosses Season 3. You know, the show where Arnie the Human, Usador the Wizard, and Chunt the Talking Badger sit in a tavern in the magical world of Foon and play the role-playing game Offices and Bosses with the help of a keeper of the game lore, an office manager, and a rotating cast of magical guests. And listen, far be it for me to tell you what to do, but if you want to hear the rest of this series, plus our other series, and all the other great Stitcher shows, sign up for Stitcher Premium at stitcherpremium.com magic with the promo code MAGIC. You'll get a free month, and you'll be supporting your tavern pals. So, go to stitcherpremium.com slash magic and sign up for a free month with the code MAGIC. Well, I guess I'll throw it over to Mr. Creepy Voice. I miss our dynamic. Greetings, kind of person who enjoys things like this. It's me, your friendly, authoritative voice, hiding out in a secret government facility, mostly because the taco bar on the fourth floor really slaps, welcoming you to season three of Offices and Bosses, known henceforth as Chief Executive Offices and Bosses, the office-based role-playing game residents of Foon enjoy in between their homespun stabs at maintaining a storyline. To answer the question you're probably thinking, it's quite easy to stop listening to a podcast you weren't intending to follow, delete it from your hard drive, and never think of it again. The answer can be found quite readily online. To answer the other question you might be thinking, you don't have to have listened to seasons one or two of Offices and Bosses for this to make sense. As much sense as it's going to make. Just know it takes place sometime during season three of Hello from the Magic Tavern. And now, hunch behind your three-sided role-playing table shield, finish filing down that 20-sided die to roll a wildly unearned number of criticals, and enjoy the show. Fear not, marketing manager, IT professional, sales rep, and temp. I am Office Manager, your guide in the realm of Offices and Bosses! Hello, welcome to Season 3 of Offices and Bosses, a uh, spinoff of Hello from the Magic Tavern. If you've never listened to the podcast before, this is everything you need to know. Uh, Some amount of time ago, I fell through a magic portal behind a Burger King in Chicago into the... I'm surprised that no one is trying to stop me. Usually, I try to get through this thing without being interrupted. And and yet you found a way to interrupt yourself. And yet, you're right. Arnie, you're being rude to Arnie. Oh. H- have you felt that maybe the problem isn't other people, that it might be you? It and you're just sort of be me. projecting? But I'm honestly learning a lot. I don't listen to the show. Oh, well, anyway, th- thank you. Uh, this is a good opportunity. Do you thank everyone who doesn't listen to the show? Uh, yeah, I think I just leave. You should. I leave oh, with if he did e- that, he'd be thanking people all day. <laughs> My personality is that I tend to lead with either an apology or just a thank you. But the the thing is, I I rarely listen to what people say, so I don't know what I'm thanking or apologizing for. I do want to say, if if Arnie was thanking people who didn't listen to the show, he'd be thanking these cities. Cleveland, New Mexico, all of Michigan, (coughs) Alaska, Honolulu. Uh, The city of Alaska. (laughs) That's... (laughs) Those are famously our lowest demographics. Oh, really? John, you started learning about Earth cities? Well, user has been looking it up, and I've been looking over his shoulder. Oh. Mm-hmm. We have stats? Oh, yes. I have lots of insight into how the podcast is performing uh, in various markets. Oh. Yeah, apparently we need to go to Austin. What, look, let's save this discussion for Under the Tavern, a behind-the-scenes podcast where me, Usador, and Chunt talk about all the things that go on behind the scenes of making Hello from the Magic Tavern. Is there any part of your life that you haven't tried to monetize at this point? I'm just listening. You're talking about separate conversations, doing separate things. Everything for you is a spinoff or a side thing. Yeah. I know. I'm just, I'm all side hustle, but no core. There's the other nothing day, in the middle. The other I day, think- he charged me five shit bucks to watch him go to the bathroom. I I think I'm going to start Twitch. 
Oh, it's freaking out. Oh, 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 terrifying. I can't watch. tear my eyes away, though. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm going to throw bits at him. Bits. Yeah. Ow, 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 ow. Now you better do that the same time every day or you're fucked. Oh, no. All right. So enough fun. <laughs> Let's play a game. Oh, Nose to the grindstone. Was that, was that fun? Look, for listeners, I just want to say uh, that you're listening to Offices and Bosses, where we are going to play the delightful role-playing game, Offices and Bosses. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is season three, baby. And, and boys, before we begin, I got to apologize about the venue. Uh, you know, we just couldn't get it together at another place. My place is certainly too small, so I went on Arrow and B, mm. and I found... A place for us to play. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah but what is I mean, this place? I don't know. I mean, it was listed as like a quaint country home. And as you can see, we're in a mansion full of shifting rooms and portals. Mm -hmm. And I don't know which way out is anymore. Yeah, it's confusing in yeah. here. And the big complaint we have is that it's not in the country, correct? Because that's false advertising. Oh, that absolutely. Upset me. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of just like an ever shifting reality that it's hard to get any grasp on what's happening, why don't we all introduce ourselves? Ooh. Uh, I'm Arnie. I'm an Earth human trapped in this world. My name is Chunt. I'm a shapeshifter and Ooh, usually a talking usually a, badger. a talking badger. Well, uh, talking is a given, and uh, I'm excited to play. This is season three. Season three of Offices and Bosses. Bosses. Wow. And I, of course, am Usador, Wizard of the Twelfth Realm of Ephesius, Master of Light and Shadow, Manipulator of Magical Delights, Devourer of Chaos, Champion of the Great Halls of Tarakus. The elves know me as Fiang Yalak. The dwarves know me as Zonin and Hook Stangis, and I am known in the Northeast as Gaswanius Maystar. And there may be other secret names. Names that if I did utter aloud, would roll a natural 20 every time. Ooh. Names like, uh, what is it, James Obsidian? What's your character's name? My Geralt. Season I, one and season two offices it, and bosses. It's John Sebastian. John Sebastian. Uh, yes, John Sebastian. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. Uh, well, I don't, I don't believe I'll be playing John Sebastian this Ooh. time around. Or John Bastion? That's not a thing. Never was. <laughs> I... I <laughs> And anyway, we're here with us today is... <laughs> yes, that, that's right. I am Trash, the Kobold. And today I will be your office manager. Oh. <laughs> and we should take just a brief moment to say that we uh, are still worried and missing Metamore, our Who? usual office manager. Well, when we usually play offices and bosses, Metamore, the part dragonborn uh, guy who works in the stable. Wait, I mean, did you just replace him with another lizard guy? Well, he was captured uh, yeah. at, the of, at the end of Offices and Bosses Season 2. Gotta yeah. assume he's dead by now. Yeah, a trickster god kidnapped, tricked him in a game of Offices uh, and Bosses. What was that guy's name? Him. Tony Obsidian? Or? You think everyone is Tony <laughs> Obsidian? It was Dorian DeVille, the trickster god, and uh, we don't know where he is or where he lives or what his house looks like. Hmm. Uh, but it's on our list of things. Eventually, we will rescue Metamore, assuming he's out there and still alive somewhere. Metamore, Eventually. if you're listening, we're coming to see you. If yeah. you're dead, we're not. Yeah. yeah. So if let us know if you're dead. Yeah. So you know, if you're listening to this in the future, check and see if Offices and Bosses season seven or eight, if we've gotten around to yeah doing that. It's mm -hmm. a bummer if he's listening and dead because then he heard it and knows you're not coming for him. That is that is upsetting. Ooh, that is... But you have to think about it in this way. Someday we'll all be dead. Oh, if he's now I do have to think about it in that way. If he's listening and dead, does he not count towards our listener numbers? You would probably know that if you paid more attention to stats. Yeah, Let's right. bury him in you're Cleveland. Right. And who, and go ahead and introduce yourself, Ornelius. Oh, yes. I am Hornelius the Fintar, and I will be taking no questions about my appearance. Oh, good. That's okay. good. That's actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. I learned my lesson. Sort of look like a... Uh, it doesn't matter. Are they, are they it doesn't matter. It's not important. Okay. And Trash, I want to say, no matter what other people are saying, I don't think you're calling bald. What? what? You're a kobold, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can just shave. I mean, I just I, wear I, hats. I, I don't want to talk about it. Just, I don't want to talk about it. Just, just wear, wear hats. That's what I do. Yeah. We, we got to play a game. We got to play a game. Uh, this is a variant on O and B. Uh, oh. you, you guys have been kind of been playing the baby game. Oh. All right. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Last time I was a baby with a uh, famously long penis. And mm -hmm. He's also a DJ. No, 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 no. Uh, version of O and B came out after the original publishing that just had more granular rules, a uh, oh. uh, greater verisimilitude to everything in the game. Mm. Uh, this is chief executive offices and bosses, Whoa. CEO and B. Oh. This is the real game. 
All right, this is gonna challenge you more than you've ever been challenged by a game of Offices and Bosses. Are you guys ready for it? Yes. Yeah. Almost excited. certainly not. Yes. <laughs> How could I be? But I'm game to try. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can I can I ask you, uh, Hornelius, have you played Offices and Bosses before? Uh, no, I have not, but I've watched many Offices and Bosses uh, streams. Where I'm from, the uh, lake lets out into many uh, streams, uh -huh. and I uh, occasionally see students' Offices and Bosses character sheets floating through those uh, streams. Gotcha, yeah. and yeah, you see them through your little fish eyes? No, 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 why, no, no. why go there? Why go there? No need, Why no talk need. about the type of eyes? So our game begins at the top of a large glass tower oh. where within we find thousands of different human beings in a horrible world where only humans exist. Ugh, terrible. Oh. He says a glass tower? Yes. Are we all like burning alive? No, 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 no. See, in this world, uh, these people form corporations and mm. they build big, boring, really architecturally indistinct towers that they put in the middle of a quite beautiful historic downtown. Gotcha, like a big, boring glass penis. Yeah, okay. exactly. Gotcha, kind of gotcha, like gotcha. that. Gotcha. Yeah. Say that. And we are bringing ourselves to the highest of the high levels, where we find an open office floor plan, where human beings are stuck horribly near one another. And everyone has floating desks, which means there are not enough desks for the people working there. Mm, scarcity. Where we find our main characters. You all are the heroes of this world. The yes. employees. Fuck yeah. Yes. I forgot that I don't like offices and bosses. <laughs> and I, I want to go around real quick and have everybody introduce their character. I, I'll need to know your name. I'll also need to know your, your title, your job position. Ooh, great. Should I start? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, yes, of course. So uh, my character's name is PJ Success. Um, I'm a seasonal manager. Ooh. Oh, what's a seasonal manager? A uh, seasonal manager is someone who was not born vaginally. They were cut open from their uh, birth mother. And there are oh. certain uh, types of bosses that they will be able to slay that oh. uh, someone of man or woman born would not be able to slay. I'm so sorry. I, I, I stumbled over my tongue. I'm not a seasonal manager. I'm a C-sectional manager. Oh, I see. I see. A C-level manager. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And I, of course... Am Clarem <clears throat> Collate Mug, <laughs> Vice President, Corporate Direct Sales, Northeast Region. <laughs> Wonderful. Ooh. You said you're not going to play John Sebastian? No, I'm not playing John Sebastian. I'm playing Tony Obsidian. Not not Tony Obsidian. That's a different one. <laughs> Clarem Collate Mug. Clarem. Clarem. Okay. How do we spell Clarem? C L A I R M. Okay. I think for <laughs> short, I'm just going to call you Shiv. <laughs> That's close. That's close. And, uh, you know, in an office like this, it wouldn't be uncommon for someone to take on a nickname. Mm. Oh. Uh, that's where they look at your name and they chip off a piece of it. They nick off a piece of your name. Oh, oh. you know would be a good nickname for Clam uh, Collate Mug? John Sebastian. <laughs> we'll see. Well, I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, Hornelius, what do you got? Uh, <clears throat> I will be playing... Tony Obsidian. <laughs> Mergers and acquisitions. Oh, wait, what was the name? Tony Obsidian. Sorry, one more time. Tony Obsidian. That's oh, just not sticking. I like that character. Maybe, voice, I'll, maybe I'll get a nickname Let's for see. it. Let's see. Is that spelled A N D Y space C A N E? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. Look at you, that. Call you Kendall for sure. Okay, so, uh, all right. Um, yeah, yeah. What, what, trash, what's your I'm very, I haven't really talked to you about this. You know, I'm from a world that is not unlike the, to you folks, fantastical world of offices and bosses. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Devil, you say? It's wonderful. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not as much escapism for me to play offices and bosses. So I try to play uh, a different kind of role-playing game that I played as a kid. All my past characters have died. Ryan DeGiorgi has died. Orlando Bloom has died. Uh, Hayden Christensen died at the end of the game. Mm. Um, I thought he was just horribly scarred and burned. Uh, yeah, but then also, like, just public opinion turned against him. Oh, like his career? Yeah. 
Yeah, mm. yeah. So uh, for this game, you know, a very popular role playing game on my world is Vampire the Masquerade, and I've always really loved the name of that game that I know next to nothing about. So that's very popular. I am going to be <laughs> Masquerade. Was it a drink? A sports drink? Sounds a little insensitive, really. Well, I am going to play a vampire. Maybe all you all know is I'm wearing a mask. That's it? I am the masked CEO. Why isn't it called the Vampire Masquerade? Well, and I'll have to slow your roll on that a little bit there, Arnie, because you're not CEOs yet. Oh. To, to be a C-level boss, that that's sort of the ultimate goal of CEO and B, mm. uh, nice. is you're questing after the, the powers of a boss. There mm. are certain relics hidden within the world, certain tasks and deeds that you'll need to perform, but if you make it to the end, uh, You'll reach sea level. You'll you'll be a boss. Since I shouldn't be sea level, I'm going to change my back. To, uh, my I misspoken said seasonal manager, so I'm going to stay that. It's just so I'm not a sea level manager. Or it could just be called the masquerade, and part of the game is finding out they're vampires. Oh. Ah. Ooh. Well, what? let's start. He's already pitched a better <laughs> thing than your thing. Thank you. I let's, wasn't really listening to what he said. Let's not go changing it too much. It's very popular. <laughs> I suppose they know what they're doing. It had a TV show, probably. Uh, that's the only way Arnie knows anything. Uh, so, let, let, let's cut back to the game. You are employees who are living amongst the bosses. Most employees live huddled somewhere in the lower mm. levels of the tower. Yes. But you have actually approached their magnificence. You walk among them yeah. every day, which makes your lives very dangerous. But there is that joyous prize that could be at the end of this long, harrowing road. You could become bosses yourselves. Ooh, yum, 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 yum. Yes. But first, you must surmount the day's first challenge. And as I have said, there are many workstations around this office, but not enough for everyone who works here. Find yourselves a station. Oh, okay. Um, right. So uh, do I? Can station. I see if there are any that are uh, far away from the windows where less light would penetrate? Ooh, okay. Well, it, it's your. It sounds like you're ready to make one of the first moves of our game. Uh, oh. To do that, I'll need you to roll a die okay. and uh, add your familiarity or your creative to analyze the situation. Oh, and do I get a pick? Which of those ones? The way you do it, if, if you want to sort of use tried and true methods, mm -hmm. you'll be rolling from your familiarity. But if you want to come up with new, interesting, innovative ideas, you'll use your creative. Oh, well, since my creative is higher, I'm going to find a desk in an innovative new way, which is use my vampire eyes. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll roll it up. Okay, let's see here. I rolled a eight. Eight. Plus two, creative. Okay, so that's 10. Uh, um, I'll trust you. So it was on, on a 7 to 15, things don't go exactly great. But you, you do get to ask me a question, and I must answer it honestly. Um, hmm. What do you think of my hair? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, is this in the game? What do I think of your character's hair? Or what do I trash think of Arnie's hair? Do we all answer? I'd love to. I mean, we too tall. So I have to be honest about it, but you you all can just answer the question. Looks great. Like. Uh, how about this? Why don't you tell me it looks good? And well, no, no, that's not the rules. I do have oh, to answer honestly. I guess I don't want to know. You it. already asked the question though, and I do yeah. have to say, bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. There's not a lot. And now we're here, and that's yeah. your fault. That's what you did with your turn. But would uh, you say my hair has potential? Oh God, Arnie, you. I don't oh, have, I have to answer to this. I don't have to answer this honestly. I don't have to answer this honestly. Yes, oh, I would. I would say it has okay, potential. Uh, but because you rolled a partial success, there's mm. there's a drawback to that. So you have uh, the information that an extra dimensional totem version of yourself has bad hair. Oh. Um, and you know that as your character now. However, you did that using an innovative new method, a creative idea, and bosses hate that. Oh, so oh. you have alerted one of the nearby bosses. Uh, they, you know, inhale deeply <laughs> and they look around the office. Someone here has new ideas. Everyone at their workstation suddenly stops and freezes, hoping that the boss won't notice them. 
but this creates opportunities for the rest of you. While people are frozen, they'll have trouble working at their stations. Did, did we all enter at this exact same moment? Did we all walk in together? I assume we awakened at some point. <laughs> Just coming to consciousness in this room. Uh, well, in one of the sleeping pods, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So oh. in a high-level corporate office like I this, see. there are sleeping pods where, where humans sort of stuff themselves so that they continue to work more and more. Humans love to work. So from where I'm at, uh, what, who is the, is there a human in my line of sight who looks particularly upset who I could push out of their floating desk? Absolutely. The, you, you see uh, someone who is shorter than yourself and high level corporate politics, the taller you are, the more likely you are to, to draw oh. a higher wage, command more respect in the office. So yeah, you just look for a short person to target and you, you see one in your line of sight. What, what do you do? Well, I, I push them out of their space and I take it over. Okay. Now, are you going to be doing this physically or socially? Ooh. Um, how about socially? Okay. I like that. That is a control roll. Uh, you're going to be rolling and adding your brand, and I'll tell you the results. Uh, that's a five plus zero is five. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's the worst it could possibly go. Well, I could have rolled a four. So, <laughs> or you, you, three. Or... You're right. Yeah. That is, I mean, look, I'm no math expert. Two. Yeah. You, you've got to choose two things for me here. You'll make an enemy. Uh, the person in question will give you a lower than five rating on an anonymous survey. What? The situation is That's going a to... Yeah, that's not good. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Uh, the situation is going to carry unforeseen complications, or your ass is on the line. And I have to choose two. <sighs> choose two. Of, you rolled very badly. I will make an enemy, mm -hmm. for I do not fear enemies. For Usador does not stare down the face of evil without standing up against it. And second, uh, unforeseen consequences. Uh, so... I think what happens is uh, you step in to try and use your, your natural social brand to push this person out of their workstation. What you don't know is that this person is really into CrossFit. And they see you, they lock eyes with you, and all of a sudden you're in a conversation about CrossFit. There's no end in sight. I think the word CrossFit is upsetting him. <laughs> Uh, trash, pardon me. Now, yeah. if I see this happening to my good friend Clarem, and me being part of uh, uh, mergers and acquisitions, may I go and try to assist Clarem here? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. To do that, you would make an improve roll. That is also going to be based off your brand, though, uh, because you are part of mergers and acquisitions, uh, you would have advantage in this situation. You'll be rolling 2d20 and taking the higher. A 20. A Ooh. 20! There yes. we go! Whoa! Okay. That's uh, the best that could have gone. Well, it could have been a 21. Well, that's right, too. That's true. <laughs> yeah, much higher numbers. Yeah, so, so on this, your name is on the project mm -hmm. now, and it goes perfectly. You swoop in. Uh, I, I want to know uh, in what way would you be able to uh, redirect a conversation about CrossFit? As you know, CrossFit is. Uh, one of the, it's a conversation pit. Once you're there, you're kind of there. Yes. Well, I don't uh, actually plan on redirecting at all. I plan on furthering the CrossFit conversation <laughs> and, in fact, belittling them with my massive CrossFit stats. Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the shorter person obviously sees your taller frame as you begin to talk about CrossFit. Uh, you know, and they're... Six-foot cable jumps. Yeah. Science crunches. Yeah, yeah. It's Lateral like, thrusts. And he tries to keep up. He's like, oh, carrying What's logs. your time? What's your time? Three minutes. I'm 256. Ooh. Yeah, he, he runs away. Ooh, in, Tony Obsidian. He runs away in shame. Tony, you're, you're the alpha of the floor right now. Uh, people know it. People respect it. The workstation is yours. Sorry, Claire. Oh, that's okay, Tony. I appreciate your help, the help. Yeah. I was really in, I was really in trouble there for a second. I want to know more about Chunt's character. Where are they in the office? Uh, so PJ Success has been hiding behind a plant in on the office floor. As I see Clarem kind of get put in his place, and uh, his place, her place, their place, her, her place. Um, and as I see, um, oh boy, what is his name? Toby. T Tony Obsidian. Tony Obsidian. You starts, don't remember that name? <laughs> start to belittle someone. What I'm going to do is I 
rush towards someone on the outer edges of the office. Subtly, I try and physically hit them so they uh, smash out the window and die. Okay. <laughs> Subtly? Yeah. Okay. This is good. This is good. Okay, uh, so this is just going to be a straight-up attack roll. Uh, that's going to use your Productivate stat. And what weapon are you using? I have a spiked club. <laughs> okay. A spiked club is is not going to be great at subtlety. Okay. So well, Then uh, I use my forehead. Okay, okay. okay. You, you can use your forehead. I have to know what, what your physical frame is like. Real small. Real small? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So I'm, yeah, it's like five, six. Ooh, yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. Oh, whoa, but follow-up question. Yeah. How big is your forehead? Uh, massive. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, if you've got massive a five head, I, I think you'd be heads. rolling this yes. with advantage. Then. Okay. Yeah. All right, then. Okay, that's going to be a 14. A 14. Okay, you that's can't. The best that could have gone. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, un- unless you have been crossbred with a goat, uh, you're not going to be... <laughs> You're, you're not going to be able to do lethal damage with this, mm-hmm. but you do sort of manage to ram them, and because this is, uh, you know, a pretty high attack roll, y- you get to make the choice. You can either, and you can choose two of these. You can avoid taking damage in return. You can resolve stress, which nobody is stressed out right now, which is great. Sure. You guys are doing great. You can deal additional damage, or you can put your coworkers in an advantageous position. Ooh, and I choose two? Choose two. And I can't put my ass on the line twice? No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't want to put your ass on the line for this. Gotcha. He does oh, gotcha. have two no, no, he, no, he does. Yeah, I, I could if I wanted to. So what I want to do is I want to do additional damage, and mm-hmm. I want to put one of my coworkers in an advantageous situation. Okay. Ooh, me, 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 me. Great, great, Ooh, great. Are you going to sing? <laughs> so I, I me, think... Me. You ram into this person. You catch them right in the hip. Uh, they sort of stumble over sideways uh, and crash into another person, freeing up another workstation. And this one is yours. You've asserted your dominance, even being short, which is very impressive. It's very hard to do. Thank you so much. At this level. So I take over the one station, and then uh, I look, I make eyes with the masked CEO mm-hmm. and give him a little wink. I'm not yet a CEO, but still, yeah, I guess I'm... Uh, you know, I think we can work on your backstory a little bit. Maybe you used to be a CEO, oh, yeah. left in disgrace, and oh, you've sort of come back mm. to reclaim. Look, I wear a mask, but maybe I'm hiding my identity for good things. You're ugly? Why? <laughs> yes, what's the maybe part? Um, what's the explanation? The radioactive face? Uh, maybe I haven't figured that part out. Oh, right. okay. Well, cool what a boy. really cool creative choice. And creativity yeah. is your best stat. Uh, yes, uh, and Good. since since I can't be CEO, I'll just be the masked BTO. Mm. Now there we go. Yeah. Taking care of business. I am taking yeah. care of business. So it seems like the metaphor, the mask, is a metaphor for not only you hiding your face, but you hiding what your character is all about or what they want or what they're interested in. Oh, yeah. For I sure. Have, I should have had a mask in <laughs> from the very beginning. Now, now Clarem, uh, it doesn't seem like the mask BTO has been going for this open workstation. Uh, that advantage uh-huh. could easily go to you. Uh, are you going to oh. take advantage of that? Uh, I, I would like to, yes. Because it looks like the mass BTO is over there thinking through their backstory a little bit, trying to figure out what might be going on there. Planning. You, yes, if I can, if there's something I can do, can I can I go ahead and make a move? Yeah, yeah. Go, just just go and describe to me what, what what you're doing. Well, if there's an open workstation, I go over there and I put my lamination machine on top of it, so everyone knows it's mine. Mm, yeah, yes. yeah. Mm. People are very hesitant to move things like that. So I, I think this is another control. This is you sort of trying to assert your personality in this space. Okay, so I'm going to roll plus brand again? Yeah, roll plus brand. That's a 12. Okay, a 12 plus, uh, did you have anything to add to that? Nope. So that's a partial success. Oh, uh, which oh, okay. means you are going to uh, uh, in- incur some sort of social penalty for that. I mm. think what happens is you sit next to the gossipy co-workers, and oh. as soon as like you get there, they notice that you've taken over the station. It's not the sort of thing where they would kick you out, but their friend usually sits there. Oh, And okay. so they start talking closer to themselves in hushed tones, and once in a while, somebody will give you kind of a look. Ooh. Ooh, shade. Do I get another move? Because I wanted to order. Uh, I wanted to order lunch for everyone. Ooh, Ooh. Okay. I like this. This sounds to me like it would be a. Hmm, 
uh, th this is a measure. Uh, you're going to uh, put one of your skills to the test. Are you ordering lunch to everyone to sort of smooth things over with, with the people that you're sitting with? Correct. Okay, so if, if you're going to be doing that, you're going to choose a method of doing it, and uh, I think that might be a creative solution for you. Okay, well, all right. Um, so I roll for that plus yeah, creative? Yeah, roll plus creative. Uh, it's a 14. 14. Uh, so 14 overall. I, I think you're going to smooth this over with most of them. Great. One of them is not going to be safe, and I think one of them has an allergy. Oh. So you order you order food for everybody. Everybody else gets the food, but I'm it gets there. I'm going to call up uh, DARPA Citinos, uh, and from What's Darpa, that again? DARPA Citinos, I'm calling DARPA Citinos, and I'm ordering garlic nuts. Garlic. Garlic I'm ordering, nuts? Garlic nuts, yeah. <laughs> no. Everybody loves garlic ah, nuts. I'm ordering garlic nuts for the whole office. Oh, hey, but pass. someone on the team has a nut allergy. <laughs> so Any kind can, of tree, can, I it's tree nuts. Pretzel. Yeah, tree nuts only. I would like it to be known uh, that Tony Obsidian uh, brought an egg salad sandwich. I did look in the uh, the book uh, before we started playing, and I selected some items for myself, one of which is an egg salad sandwich. Mm. I will be abstaining from lunch. Smart. And instead of having a garlic knot, K-N-O-T, I'm going to have a garlic knot, N-O-T, that is just not garlic. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now I, I want to return to the mass BTO. The garlic knots have obviously filled the office with kind of a thick... Italian cooking scent, something that you as a vampire would not be able to stand for. But something me as a Tony loves. <laughs> yeah, it reminds you of grandma's house. Mm -hmm. uh, but for you, it's causing you a lot of distress. You're going to need to find a path out of there, I okay. think. Um, is there like a elevator nearby? Uh, so there are there are banks of elevators, but I think the situation is is really dire for you. You're probably gonna have to duck into one of the offices. Oh, okay. Which could be dangerous because that's where the bosses live. Oh, all right. I'm just gonna have to go in there and hope my mask can do the work for me. So I, I'm gonna need you to make a measure roll for me, and I just want you to choose which of your abilities you think your your character is using. Th there could be a lot of different ways of approaching this. You know, you could be using your brand, you know, mm -hmm. trying to excuse your way in there. You could be using your productivate and just using your raw physical talents to get in there. Well, my highest stat is brand. And a plus four. Mm -hmm. uh, so despite the fact that I don't thoroughly understand what that means, I think I'm going to go with that one. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go into an office and just say, hey, it's me, the masked uh, BTO. Oh, that's so on brand for you. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's yeah. good. And, then I'm, just and that's, point, I'm going to point at the mask. And Arnie, that's, that's the sort of thing that you think a really like charismatic person would say? Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's mean, just, all right, I was just... Yeah. Well, I, I was just trying like to establish, in, you, know. you know, most people sort of like try to play an idealized vision of themselves in this game. So I said, hey, yeah. more like, to more be like fair, something yeah. asthmatic. I pointed so. at the mask. You got also, I know I maybe didn't go into a lot of description. The mask is really cool. It is a fantasy world where the rules work different than our world. Sure, 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 sure. Also, sure. it's unfair because he's from Earth and he knows how to do it so well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The rest of us are struggling. If you work in an office and you go into the boss's office unannounced wearing a mask, <laughs> that's a power move. That always goes over well. Yeah. Oh, and I, right. uh, can I, uh, I don't know if this is allowed trash. Yes. Can I roll for something I think I see? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you, if you want to do that, all you would have to do is roll define. When you roll a define, you know, uh, offices and bosses like kind of ended up in a situation where a lot of people would think they would see things, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. there was really no way to control that. Here in CEO and B, it's built right into the game. Just for fun, I think the guy that I headbutted, I think I see him start to get up, and then I think I see him start to go home, and on his way out, I think I see him slip on a knot, a garlic knot, a little slip knot going on. Yeah, uh, let's oh. see. Ugh. Okay, and that's there's a no roll that could be good <laughs> enough. And what am I rolling for? Uh, so you're going to roll and add your creative. Oh, boy. Do you care if you get you it? You hate to see that. It's a 23. <laughs> <laughs> so what? <laughs> uh, so that works out exactly mm. as, as you say. Uh, uh, and that body hits the floor. I thought I saw it. when I did. Could have mm. been a 24. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the worst I could have got. 
fly, you fools. Over to patreon.com slash magic tavern right now and become a patron of the show. For only $5 a month, you get access to all of our wonderful bonus content and material and ad-free versions of the show. I'm going to still do my so, role. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. We'll do your role. It's a 10 plus 4. It's a 14. A 14. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is a partial success, meaning okay. you're, you're definitely going to get what you want, but there is going to be a drawback to this situation. Oh. You walk in, and uh, the boss, blessedly, is not there. Oh, lucky. Uh, but instead, you find their personal assistant. Now... You, you know how in Foon we, we have some people that are, are sort of ensorcelled into servitude. On Earth, they do this by just hiring someone. Humans will just give away their lives to other humans for no reason at all. Hmm. So strange. Hmm. Yeah, we yeah. know the world, word ensorcelment, right? Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes, I've, I, I ensorcel things all the time. Yes, I'm a, I'm a big West Wing fan. What? What's that? <laughs> It's a little bit. Oh, okay. You know, if you see a bird and you favor one wing over the, over the other. Oh, okay. Uh, Most birds fly with one wing away from uh, the sun. No, oh, the sun is to the west. To the east, it's a west wing. Oh. Uh, but but Ernie, you, you get in there. You get in there. The the personal assistant sees you and goes, "Mr. Johnson doesn't have a three o'clock." What do you do? Uh, let's see. I already pointed at my mask. Um, you try doing that one more time. I Maybe guess. with two fingers? Uh, let's see here. You what wouldn't be I? able to use creative if you tried doing it again. Ah, uh, yes. Hmm, maybe uh, I should get a mask. Well, these are the things that I have. I have a staple remover. I'm not sure. I just sort of like how it looks like vampire teeth. Teeth, yeah. It makes you feel comfortable. Uh, Smart. And then for my weapon, I chose one of those really long... One of those really long... Um, Wait, are you a vampire? One of those long spears. What's that? Are you a vampire? No, Wait. I'm just, I got a mask. That's what I thought. It's Vampire the Masquerade. There's no indication that the vampires were one wearing a mask. What? Yeah, I thought you were dressing up as a vampire. Oh, well, I was assuming that I'm a, you know, behind this mask, there's no way of knowing if I'm a vampire or not. But Except you just said you were. What's that? What? But we don't know. That's part of the mystery, which we'll tease out throughout this entire season. But I am a vampire. So, so <laughs> getting back to the weapon that you were describing, you said it's like a really long spear? A very long spear, like five times as tall as me. The kind, <laughs> like if I was at the is beginning it tall of a charge. Uh, it is both tall and long. <laughs> okay, so this is sounding a lot like Good a one. lance. Are your arms strong enough to hold a lance? <laughs> It sounds more Whoa. like a... Hey, <laughs> whatever I have to roll to not be that. <laughs> Look, behind this mask, <laughs> I am not a lance. Okay, okay, but I mean, we're going to have to get into the blood doping later on since you are a vampire. Oh, blood. See, why did you have that reaction to blood? <laughs> What's Seems this? like you are a vampire. Uh, no, I'm, I may be a vampire. I are you going to turn on us? No, why would I turn on you? Mm -hmm. I feel like you already did this. I feel like... We already play, watched something like this play out over a very long period of time. Just so everyone's clear, I am in no risk of being turned on. <laughs> Just so and we're clear. If you Plus were sure turned on, on physically, <laughs> what thing? would happen? Oof, I guess I would uh, have to go merge and acquire in the bathroom. Okay. And I want to say that your no horse cock would <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, Why? Why even bring don't, it up? Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, so you've got your lance out. Yes. Uh, you're going to roll an attack. You'll You'll... Do that using your Productivate. Okay, uh-oh, my Productivate is zero. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, I got a 12. Okay, uh, you got a 12, which means you are successful. Oh. Uh, Lance is going to do enough. Personal assistants don't have a lot of physical power. They've mm. sort of been worn to the bone yes. by the demands of their jobs. Sure. Good. So you spear them through, but in the process, uh, you're going to cause some destruction. I'm just going to roll to see what that might do. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, r rolling. Uh, looks like you were very successful. You, you knocked over one of the boss's filing cabinets. Oh, nice. Ooh. Anytime something's accomplished in an office, it's filed Ooh, away. Yes. In these I've seen. dark cabinets. And what falls out is a watch that glows in the light. 
I, I think you, uh, I'm going to need a roll from you to see if you recognize this object. Oh, okay. Object. Come on, yeah. honey. Come on. Recognize it. Uh, that is a five. Okay. Uh, so you just see a, a glowy watch on the ground. Uh, it looks, you know, pretty, pretty unimpressive to you. Also, you just committed a murder. So yeah. maybe there are other things that are on your mind. Yeah, probably. I think, is there any blood? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of blood. Okay. I'm just going to go. I'm what gonna, was that? I'm Why did you make a bunch of mouth noises? Why did you rub a hot dog in that blood? <laughs> <laughs> there were better, easier ways for you to convey that if that's what you wanted to do. Yeah. Someone else would have eaten that hot dog. <laughs> yeah. That's Ellen's true. allergic to the garlic knots. Yeah, that's true. Do vampires on your world eat blood-soaked hot dogs? <laughs> Maybe they do. How did that That's not come up? That's a mystery that will play out throughout the entire season. I hope not. <laughs> also, I take the watch just because it's there. Okay. I, I, I would pick up anything, really. Everything. You, you hear a voice as soon as you touch the watch. You, you hear a voice echoing in your mind, oh. announcing itself. I am the watch of the Sixth Sigma, one of the artifacts that will bestow upon one person bosshood. Lucky? Collect the other five and ascend. Oh. Ooh. How many are there total? He just said six. No. So, but I mean, I can't, I can't repeat myself. This is one of those games where you have to write down, remember what's going uh, on. He literally said there's six. He said five and the other five. Okay. Twice he mentioned. Uh, okay. Let me check your dice. You rolled a 17 last time. I did? <laughs> That's what that is? Yikes. Okay, uh, uh... So, Trash, I have a question. So, Arnie found the first Sigma. Sigma? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Sigma. Sigma. So, is he the only one who's able to ascend, or can we each vie for the most, or do we collectively collect six? So, in order to collect the six Sigmas, you're going to need to work together, but only one of you can ascend. Ooh, interesting. Oh. Inner office politics, interesting. Mm, yes. Interesting. The ultimate challenge. Uh, I, I do, because we were talking about inner office politics, I want to come back to Clarem. Clarem. Who the fuck is Clarem? <laughs> what, what do you mean I'm playing Clarem? Tony Obsidian. Oh, okay. Yes, Tony Obsidian is playing Clarem. <laughs> Wait, no, you're Clarem. I'm Tony Obsidian. No, Tony Obsidian is currently tricking Clarem. Ah, oh, that's right. Oh, Eyes on your own papers. So confusing. So, Clarem, you have been enlisted by Tony Obsidian to go get uh, some some sugar for him, uh, but of course, he, can I can I laminate it? Well, so your lamination machine is the thing in question. Oh. Tony uh, was enlisted by Karen, who is allergic to garlic knots, oh, uh, to lure you away from your workstation. When you get back, you find some coffee has spilled on your lamination machine. Oh, um, oh no, what am I going to do? Um, I guess I'll... Quit sucking that dead guy's dick. Can I roll for that tonight? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Let's keep moving. Your, your character is very close to being canceled. <laughs> well, um... It, it, do I know that Karen spilt it, or I don't know? I just see that you there's coffee. You don't know that I Karen know spilt it. it. You see the co You come back to your workstation. You you felt okay leaving it because the lamination machine is there, but it's been defaced. Who do I see in the immediate vicinity? So you see the gals that are all around, and they're being pointedly silent. Mm. Which one is closest to me? Uh, let's see here. Uh, that's going to be Bree. Well, or did you want... Physically or emotionally? Physically. Okay, then it's going to be Bree. I'm going to try. Just to out of curiosity, which one is emotionally closest? Don't take care and don't take care and don't take care and. Mm, that's Samantha. Oh. oh, I would never hurt Samantha. Well, I think I'm going to try to uh, cut off uh, Bree's head. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, physically or emotionally? Physically. Okay. Okay. Now, just warning you. Uh, you, you had the spiked club. No, no, no. That, that, that was PJ. Uh, what, what is your weapon that you've selected? I have a Kopesh. It's a two-bladed weapon with two curved blades that are the opposite direction, and the longer, taller blade has two teeth that curl in. Okay, that's an exotic weapon. Mm. Thank you. Mm. I, also, uh, I also have a Kopesh. It's, uh, it's $120 a year. I thought you were going to say you love Kopeshi. <laughs> you have a Kopesh that's yearly? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Sure. 
So I swing to cut off Bree's head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, please roll your attack. That's a ten. Do I add anything to that? Um. So no, you you just uh, productive age, right? Yeah, when, when, when it ta- you, you'll, you'll add your productive eight, yes. Oh, that's a 12 then. Oh, a 12. I mean, it, it's still going to get you in the 7 to 15 range, so you're only going to be able to choose one to avoid taking damage to resolve some stress, which nobody's stressed out, or deal additional damage here. Mm. You only get to do one. I'll deal additional damage. Okay, uh, so That's what- the move if you're trying to cut someone's head off. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so you cut off Bree's head. Bree's head separates from her body. It flies over the table, and it lands on Karen's desk. Nice. And she gives you a look like, what are you doing? And when I do one of these where I point at my eyes, and I point at her eyes, and I point at my eyes, and I point at her eyes. Okay, okay. Um, uh, I, I think th- that works out great for you, but- I think uh, that th- there is the drawback of now they're kind of united against you. Oh. Samantha looks at you like she can't even believe you right now. What? Samantha does that. Come on, So you're going to take some emotional damage oh, from this? No. That is going to be six emotional damage. Damn. That is. Oh, no. Yeah. Now that I see that Bree's head has been severed from her body, uh, may I try to acquire that head and <laughs> use it as a second head for myself? <laughs> Waste not, want not. It um, is a good idea. Trying yeah. to get head in the office is frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but if you're handsome, you're allowed to do it, correct? <laughs> what well, makes sense for... In older editions of the game? <laughs> well, what version is this? These oh, days it's very frowned you're upon. You're right, yes, yes, yes. I wouldn't even want to try that. Uh, Tony Obsidian <laughs> goes about his business. <laughs> Hammers out some emails instead. All right, uh, I'm going to need you to roll uh, to see what your opinions about Star Wars are. I think we should check in on that. Okay, uh, but I don't want to use creative because I don't have any um, creative opinions about Star Wars. Uh, what I do have is uh, I want to use my productive aid because I'm just really hammering out this email. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, that is a 12. Okay, so you hammer out that email. There are some very borderline opinions about Star Wars in that email. Uh, mm-hmm. That's going to come back to bite you later, for sure. Boba Fett, more like Boba Vett, he served in the military. Arnie, I told uh, a lot of people in Foon about what you told me about Star Wars, so it's starting to really spread. It's oh, a, oh, really? My yeah. impression is a rough translation of what I uh, <laughs> heard from Chant, uh-huh. a.k.a. PJ Success. It, it's like a, that old game, um, uh, Tin Can. Uh, it's how? like you tell someone one thing and they tell someone else another thing and it slowly dilutes it. Tin why, can. Why is that like a tin can? It's like a tin can with string. Yeah. You're talking to a tin can. Talking to a tin can. Have you ever talked into a tin can with your friends? Uh, well, why would you do that here in Foon? That's how you, you know, spread gossip and talk to people. Through a tin can and a string? Sometimes. Yeah, why not? Is that meant to be a stand-in for anything? I don't think so. Hmm. Okay. Why would you stand in? It works just fine. Okay. On its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works fine. Okay. PJ, uh, uh, you got a deadline coming up. Okay. Um, I, I, I just I, can I put my ass on that, that deadline. You can put your ass on the deadline for sure. I'll hold off to hear more about it. Okay, uh, so you've got a deadline coming up. It's going to be a lot of work. At okay. this point, you might need to try and displace it onto someone else. Ooh, yes. Um, all right, I will do that because PJ Success is uh, trying to you know climb the social uh, ladder. You know, yeah. So I will try and do that. What do I need to roll for? Uh, so this is going to be control. You're going to be rolling off of your brand, and I want you to target one of your coworkers, the one you feel that is weakest, most vulnerable. Well, it's got to be that severed head. For uh, sure. Bree, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> is it still alive or dead? Uh, I don't know, Arnie. This is actually a thing that I don't know. When humans get their heads cut off, what usually happens then? Um, they die. Okay. Usually. Well, they right. die. Well, so here's what I'll do. I'm gonna. Um, I, I kind of. Uh, I don't look at anyone uh, specifically, but I kind of generally say like, "Hey, Josh," and I see if anyone perks their head up. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Just to see if there's a Josh. Hey, that's jo- good. Hey, Josh. Yeah, just roll your brand on yeah. that. That's good. Uh, that's gonna be a six. Okay, Josh stands up. Josh is a CrossFit guy. Damn it. <laughs> Okay. He's um, he's already changed into his workout clothes. Gotcha. Uh, oh. He's got his shaker bottle. Yeah. So you know, he's going to come over. You can probably get him to do what you want. You are you do have seniority. Okay. But you're going to hear about CrossFit. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, I, I go ahead and I, I uh, jump on that um, uh, uh, explosive potion mm-hmm. uh, and take one for the team. So I say, "Hey Josh, 
Um, yeah. And I try and really butter him up, try and really, uh, how, how, why, how are you so big? Oh, well, let me tell you about the logs that I carry. Okay. Details. So, sometimes I carry a log back and forth across a room. Great, I can't, like I can't do it and I walk away. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I do the project yeah, myself. That's yeah. tough. That's yeah. tough. Yeah. 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 So uh, I thought I could do it. I couldn't. Didn't even roll. Now, did you yeah. put yeah. your ass on the line on that one? No, I don't think I did. Okay. If I'm being honest, I didn't. Bullet if you had, if you had succeeded in retrospect, would you put your ass on the Absolutely, line? Absolutely, 100%. Oh, okay. yeah. That's one of the technical flaws of this game <laughs> uh, is you really sure. decide whether or not things are bad for There's you two, after uh, you. Two things PJ Success puts on a line his name on the dotted. For his ass. Oh, on the dotted. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Uh, so you've killed the boss's personal assistant. Oh uh, yeah, I did do that. Yeah. Um. So you kind of have to get out of here. Oh shit. I think. Yeah. You might want to make okay. yourself scarce. Okay. Well, I'm. Well. Uh. Did anyone see me go into this office? Um. Uh. Let's see. I I'll did. <sighs> yeah. So great. I'm gonna have to kill John Sebastian. Uh. Who? Right. Go for it. <laughs> You're going to kill John Sebastian? Yeah, I'm going to find John Sebastian and kill him. All right. Uh, I'm going to need you to roll that attack. Okay. And I'm going to use my staple remover. All right. That'll give you advantage on that. I rolled a 17. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Uh, so John Sebastian, I believe, was unemployed but bought a big television. Mm -hmm. So uh, you... No, 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 no. John Sebastian did not do that. John Bastian did. Wow, oh, wait. Shit. Hold on. Mind games. Usador, did you fucking trick me by using the wrong name? I think you tricked yourself. <laughs> Hold on. That makes, Arnie, that makes did more you sense. trick me by uh, using the wrong name? Hold on. Let, let me check my employee manifest to see who John Sebastian is. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That's one of the bosses. Oh. That's a CFO. A CFO? Yeah, chief financial officer. Oh. Uh, this well, is, I said I, but I, you know what? I, yeah, I'm a man of yeah. my word. You've, you've, you've committed to it now. Yeah. You attack him. Uh, oof. Wait, is he a chief financial officer and a gentleman? <laughs> I mean, I can roll for it. Because if so, he might let it slide, right? Uh, no, it looks like uh, he made some bad tweets. Uh, He's not a gentleman ooh, whatsoever. Damn, damn. Well, I did still roll a 17. You did roll a 17, but this is... All right, I, I'm going to... He recently got weight loss surgery, too, so you're trying to remove his stomach staples? <laughs> oh, That's got to be what it is. That's got to be what it is. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not a trained surgeon. You're going to make a mess of things. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> all right, I'm going to roll damage for it. With no anesthesia. All right, you do three damage. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you... You see John Sebastian enter the office. He's got he's extremely tall, got very big hair. Yes. Uh, he walks in. Big big hair? Oh, big hair. Huh. Huge hair. Tall hair? Yeah. So such tall hair. Very impressive I hair. I should have attacked with my long spear. Full <laughs> head of it. Uh, yeah, you go up you go up to him, you you snap at him with a staple remover. You you do get a staple, you pull it right uh -huh. out. But you know, you you've aroused his ire. Well, uh, he's upset for sure. Okay, just out of curiosity, uh -huh. so I've taken three hit points. You've taken three hit points away from me. How many hit points does a boss on average have? Uh, about twenty-five. Ooh, yeah, that's a lot. That's, that's a, a lot, lot more than three. Seeing, uh, I wouldn't have attacked the boss, but he, I mean, you wanted to go after John Sebastian. Which, mm. Seeing this happen and seeing my my good friend attacking the masked BTO attacking John Sebastian, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, well, might mm -hmm. I be able to assist him? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, if you want to roll and improve on that, uh, you can add to that I would action. also like to attack. But your name will be attached to this project. I, I'm totally fine with that because I see an opportunity to advance uh, by killing a boss. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to uh, also attack John Sebastian. Okay. All right. Uh, now, I took a couple uh, um, items from the book uh, in terms of uh, what I would be fighting with. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can either use my business attire iron or I can use, and I don't know what this is, I just wrote it down, my pack of trident gun. <laughs> what does that mean? So The trident uh, gun sounds more powerful. Yeah, and yeah. you have a whole pack. So it's a pack. The, it's, I, I, 
I'm assuming it's extra ammo. I've I've only uh, sort of sort of lightly glazed over like like some of the the weapons in the book, but mm. I think a trident is you know one of those three pointed spears. Yes. So you must have just a bunch of guns of disposable tridents. Yes. It says my trident gun is to spear men. Let me see. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna look at this up. It uh, looks like. Uh, Four out of five dentists recommend it. So oh, I'm going to say oh. that it's probably a pretty good one. If you want to give me an attack roll there, yes, I'll give absolutely. you advantage on that for oh. sure. Goody, goody. Uh, I rolled a 19, so I have a 23. A 23. Oh, ooh, as All good right. as that could have gone. I could have gone any better. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll roll your damage for that. Uh, that's going to be 15 damage. Oh, that's yeah. a oh, oh, yes. very that? big hit. Very, very big I, too, hit. seeing this melee occurring, decide to jump in and help my friends. So Claire runs over to where the masked BTO is and swings her kopesh with all her strength. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Roll, roll, roll that attack for me. That's a 15 plus... Product. 17? 17. Ah, that gets you. All right. Th- this is uh, a 16 plus. That that That's as about as good as these things can go. Ooh, here. Wonderful. Oh. Yeah, well, without getting a critical. So, you know, uh, same, same thing. You can avoid taking damage. You can uh, resolve some stress, which nobody's taken any stress yet. That's great. Oh, no. That's that's the dream here. Yes. Uh, you can deal additional damage or put your coworkers in advantageous positions. Uh, you get to choose two of those. Oh, I would like to deal additional damage and put the masked BTO into an advantageous position, please. Oh, thank you so well, much. Well, if you kill You're John so Sebastian, welcome. there's a promotion path, most likely. Yeah, you'd be oh. the BTO killer. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, the that, o- then the only person that could stop me is a mind hunter. Oh. That's going to be 11 damage. That Damn. is wildly impressive. This boss is almost down. Ooh, I mean, and I, I see all this commotion, and I run over and I say, and my forehead, and I, I try and ram. Uh, I've, I've done away with my spike club. I leave that somewhere else, and I just try and use my forehead. For sure, for sure. Yeah. If you want to use my business attire, Iron, you're more than welcome. <laughs> I think maybe I take the spikes out of the club and put them to, affix them to my forehead. Okay, uh, uh, but before you run in there, uh, the, this boss does get to respond to of these course. attacks. Yes, oh. Um, oh, uh, no. He takes out the supply chain, which oh. is uh, made out of paper clips and office supplies and you know anything that might be down system, uh, and he swings it at you. Oh, can I? I'm I'm gonna like point at uh, your mask. So I'm gonna <laughs> sort of point at Tony Obsidian, like maybe <laughs> attack him. Okay, okay, so you're you're going to try and, and, and move some blame onto Tony mm-hmm. Obsidian? Yeah. All right, uh, so for that, you're going to have to roll control. Oh, boy. Yeah. All right. Got this, Arnie, come on. Let's see here. I rolled a 14. 14. Can uh, Tony Obsidian roll a brand check to... Um, uh, oh, counteract this? Counteract yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to immediately pretend like I'm still writing emails. Oh. That's oh, so, yeah, that I is, mean, we'll see. That's so Tony Obsidian. <laughs> oh, Tony Obsidian rolled a 13, what? off by Ooh, one. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I, Tony, I think this is going to you. Caught uh, with my trident gum. You know what would have been better? Hmm? 14. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the supply chain hits you for five damage. No, five damage? Yeah. Oh, that's half of my hit points. How many oh, hit no. points do you have? Nine. Wow. Tony how many, how many do you strong. have, Arnie? I've got three. Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. That would have killed you outright. I know, right? Good thing I pointed. I'm going to use that trick again. I didn't make it complicated. I have one hit point. <laughs> so I probably... I probably you're going to ram the boss right now. Yeah, I probably yeah. got stressed and died. In some ways, it's smart mm-hmm. because you don't have to keep track of anything. It's yeah. like if you get attacked, mm-hmm. you're dead. They say the sickest people are the smartest people. Mm-hmm. Who I says love that, that saying. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, Chunt, let's see if PJ can finish off this boss. Uh, so PJ success uh, again yells his uh, famous catch line. Uh, I make eye contact with PJ and I point at Tony. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's roll it out. <laughs> I yell my famous catch line. What's that now? <laughs> what are you saying? What, what's a catch line? Uh, a catch, catch line. line. Yeah, catch line and sinker. Yeah, it's like a catch phrase, but it's more of a line. It's not a. It's not a full phrase. It's just like a line. It's like when you can't <laughs> remember your catch phrase. Yeah, it's like, you know, like you- catch. <laughs> Catch line? Catch line? A uh, point of order. Uh, does uh, Chunt ever have to roll since his last name is Success? Ooh, oh, good call. Uh, once per day. I mean, <gasps> if you want to invoke that. Oh, mm, one hit point. Better not waste it. <laughs> no, I'll roll for it. 
Yeah, yeah, roll for it. So, PJ Success, you want me to hit... Arnie, you want me to hit Tony Obsidian? Yeah. I thought we were trying to get the boss to hit him, not, not sabotage him. I know, but I'm just... I don't know. It's just like we're already on a roll getting him hurt. Uh, I don't want to turn him on. I turn him on him. Clarem Collate Mug is just happy to be here. Is that a tongue twister? Yep. Tony, what are you... Oh, yes, Clarem. No, not Tony. Uh, Clarem? Okay. I feel like I'm incapable of saying any of the names. <laughs> Claren okay. Collate mug? What's wrong with that? Claren mm. in present danger. So I'm going to roll to uh, to head, but aren't you sure? Tony Obsidian? Uh, let's ask. Uh, I mean, we could pull the room. I mean, this is a valid strategy if you want to. Pull the room? Do you have a pull? I do have a very long spear. You're going to spear the room? Yeah. Here, I'm just going to try and headbutt the boss. Okay. And do I add anything? Uh, that That's going to be your uh, productive aid. Okay, so uh, it's a 14 plus a productive 8 is 20. <laughs> That's not. Uh, so it's a, this is a partial success, okay. uh, which means you're definitely going to do your forehead damage, which, and that's going to be enough to take down the boss. We uh, did it. The problem is I think there's some crossfire here. You are also... <laughs> You're also going to hit the the masked uh, BTO. What? Oh. At the same time, and I think your mask comes off, oh. and it goes on PJ. Now it's kind of a PJ mask. Ooh! Instead, oh, no, I'm so sleepy. <laughs> but the boss, the boss does fall as you know the the, the mask is knocked off uh -huh. your face. I, I think the watch spills out of your pocket as it mixes <gasps> with the CFO's blood. Jesus, I'm a fucking mess. <laughs> yeah, it'll mix with. Uh, John John Sebastian's blood. Quick, slap your hot dog at that. <laughs> Is that your catch line? Yes, <laughs> that's my catch line. It'll come up more. <laughs> um, as, as the mask, mask uh, touches the blood, uh, they mix together. It, it, it glows with corporate energies. Uh, oh, yes. And you, you can see that it is now attuned. Ooh. Oh. So there's like a mummy in there? Yeah, it's got synergy with you tune? now. Oh, a tune. Because uh -huh. you oh. bathed it in the blood of a boss. Wow. Yeah, you've activated its synergy. Okay. So now once per day, you're going to be able to activate the power of a boss. Okay. You know, Damn. Part of a boss's power. Does the rest of the office look cowed at what we've done? Um, The rest of the office, I, I think, is most... Oh, I can roll for them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a 20. Yeah, I will say what, they have turned into cows. Oh, they oh. are completely cowed. Very nice. Yeah. Wow. That's how you want your employees to be. So, should I use the power of the boss? I mean, if it, it's once per day, if you want to do it now, I mean, there's not you're gonna have to feed it the on. blood of another boss if you oh, want to oh, recharge that energy. There's, it's a strategy thing for I sure. See. There's a yeah. cost. You know what? Tony Orlando approaches uh, Tony, Tony Orlando. Tony Orlando. I why like you, the sound you, of that guy. Uh, speaking of. Tony Orlando approaches speak, the girl. No, hold on. Speaking of, thank you, Orlando. <laughs> that was also on my list. Good. Mm. Uh, Tony Obsidian approaches the group. Mm -hmm. Hey, boys. Wait, look at what we just did. Excuse me? Hey, I, I use it colloquially. All right. <laughs> we just killed the boss, baby. That means we're in charge now, I think. It seems like the masked BTO has the watch, so I guess you're in charge of the party for the time being. Oh. For the time yeah, being. Yeah, you, you are the team lead right now. Okay. Right now. Huh. Do you have your mask on, or is it still on the floor? It's on you, PJ. It's on you, PJ. Oh, it's a PJ mask. I was just looking for my mask, and I found it. Well, I have my hand Somebody over stop my... you. <laughs> I... <laughs> Please, somebody stop me. I'm on fire. I'm smoking. <laughs> Slow down, Catboy. I put my hand over my face so no one can... S it still covers my face. Smack, and I've hit it. And, uh, and you have cancer, you too. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, a terrible way to find out. Yeah. Okay. You're the, you're the, you're the boss now for yeah, all Arnie, intents you're the, and you're purposes. What are we going to do tomorrow, boss? What are we going to do tomorrow, boss? Tomorrow, we're going to order in for lunch. <laughs> We did that today. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's one of the things we did today. That's the one thing we did today, besides kill the assistant and the boss. Wow, what a button. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to Chief Executive Offices and Bosses, because a talk show hosted out of a tavern in a magical land wasn't enough of a stretch. Use It or the Wizard was played by Matt Young.
Chunt the Shapeshifter was played by Adol Rafai. Special guest Hornelius the Fintor was played by John Patrick Cohen. Listen to John's other podcast, Hey Riddle Riddle, and find him on Twitter at JP so Fly. The office manager, Trash the Kobold, was played by James D'Amato. Find his podcasts where he plays different role-playing games, campaign and one-shot at oneshotpodcast.com or your favorite podcast app. James's book series, The Ultimate RPG Guides, including his newest work, The Ultimate RPG Gameplay Guide, can be found wherever books are sold or at bit.ly slash RPG Gameplay. Chief Executive Offices and Bosses is produced by Adol Rafai. Post-production coordination by Garrett Schultz. This episode edited by Stefan Dranger. Special assistance by Ryan DeGiorgi. Offices and Bosses logo by Allard LeBan. Theme music by Andy Poland. In the game of life, we're dealt so many victories and losses. Unless it's a friendly, low-stakes game of chief executive offices and bosses. Hey, thank you for listening to Hello from the Magic Tavern. A great way to support the podcast is to join our Patreon. You'll get ad-free versions of our entire back catalog, including all the Magic Tavern spinoffs like Offices and Bosses, I Am Spin, Tax, Shadow, Sit, there are a lot of them. There are two new exclusive bonus episodes every month, Discord, all kinds of stuff. To get more information, go to patreon.com slash magic tavern. That's patreon.com slash magic tavern.